All right, welcome to our channel here. Um, we are standing outside at Cabela's right now. One of our subscribers asked us to do a video on what we would take to Yellowstone with us on a trip. So Justin McKamey, this is for you. We appreciate you commenting on our videos. Um, and if you're watching this, uh, as you're, if you're one of our subscribers, please leave a comment as well, what you might like to see in the future from us. Uh, and if you're brand new to the channel here, uh, please click that subscribe button. So my wife and I talked about this a little bit and we thought, okay, um, a lot of times I go to Yellowstone and I'm just really in a hurry to get there and to go see as much as I can and I just want to have fun. And so I'm not always the, the best prepared for our trips, I'll be honest with you. Um, and, but my wife, on the other hand, she's always kind of thinking about comfort and survival so she makes sure we have water and food all the time and um, she's more thinking about some of those details where I'm thinking about where we're going and uh, camera equipment and, and things like that so uh, we decided we're gonna come here to Cabela's and put together a little packing list for you for Yellowstone you're not comfortable you're not having a good time so here's something that I want to suggest is Yellowstone Grand Teton Glacier all those places the temperature can vary by 40 degrees and so I kid you not you could need this in the middle of the day like a sun hat and you could use a coat at night um, I I also one of my very favorite things is just a hoodie um, you know, when we travel in the summer, I don't normally need to grab a coat, but if you're going there after September, yes, grab a coat on your way out the door. Make sure you have that with you. But I grabbed some Columbia things just because one of my first jobs when I was in college is I worked at a sporting goods store and I bought Columbia gear and it lasted me for years. You've heard me before talk about water. Seriously, you will not regret getting a Yeti. Um, I have this exact cup now. I don't take this hiking, of course, it's a tumbler, but I do take it to work every day but I do carry a bottle like this around when I go hiking. So yes, they're a bit pricey, but you can put a few ice cubes in there and you'll have cold water for 12 hours. It's amazing. Here's another suggestion. Are just these little disposable ponchos. Um, I am the type of person that does not like to own a lot of things unless I regularly use them. And a poncho is not something I use regularly. However, storms blow in and out of the national parks like that. And so, you know, you don't need that much space to pack a disposable poncho, and they come in so handy when that does happen, and then you can just throw it away and not worry about it. We got caught in a rainstorm at Old Faithful last time. <laughs> it was quite memorable. Nothing can ruin a good hike like bugs. <laughs> you know, I think about mosquitoes coming out in the evening, but at Fairy Falls, and what was the other one? Mystic Falls. And Mystic Fairy Falls. Falls. Heard, we've heard multiple comments about their hike being ruined by the bugs. So we've got mosquito repellent and as we were checking this out, another shopper pointed this out. He said it is incredible. So we're gonna take his word for it because he's like, oh yeah, I use it when I go horseback riding. They never bother me. So we're gonna check this out and so try it. So it's a it. lotion instead of a spray. Um, yeah, we yeah, tried says that. It works really well. looks like it's smaller to pack around. Uh -huh. And then just another thing, just, you know, any sort of sunscreen is important. It's not uncommon to be really concerned about wild animals when visiting these parks and rightly so there are bears there and so people ask questions about pepper spray now if you can see here they are completely sold out of their bear spray and and we're kind of curious we've never purchased bear spray but we're thinking we're going to start having bear spray with us when we go and so we're going to order some and we're going to test it out and make a whole other video all about bear spray because if we're noobs about bear spray maybe you are too and we'll learn about this together all right, let's talk about footwear. Which is better? If you are going to Yellowstone or Grand Teton and planning to do just the typical Old Faithful boardwalks, Jenny Lake, those are very, um, very groomed trails. A lot of them are boardwalks. And so I would recommend a tennis shoe, not a hiking boot. These would be much more comfortable. And you know, you are both parks, you're spending a lot of time in a car. This is way comfortable to have while you're driving around versus one of these. The only time I would recommend boots like this is if you're gonna be doing more off the trail where you're gonna be getting in water and mud, you know, this will protect your feet from getting wet, but if you're doing just the typical tourist attractions, go with the trail runner. 
Okay, I just showed you a, a trail runner and then I found this. I've been a runner for 20 years. I always buy Asics. They last forever and they're so comfortable and they are a great shoe for a great price. They're not pricey. Okay, I'm jumping in on this one because this one means a lot to me. <laughs> um, we've gone swimming at the Boiling River in Yellowstone quite a bit and also some of the places in Grand Teton like uh, String Lake and the, the and rocks. And Coulter Bay. And Coulter Bay. And the rocks have torn my feet up. So the next time I go, I am definitely taking a pair of swim shoes that I can walk around in the water uh, without <laughs> without killing my feet. Um, so if you had some sandals, you could certainly bring those and you would be fine. Uh, but I don't really wear sandals much. So and they and don't, these are, and they these don't are, stay on well in the river. They float away sometimes. Okay, I'm not a sandal wearer, so I wouldn't know. But these are much cheaper anyway. So I'm totally gonna buy these so that the next time I go to these places, I'm gonna be comfortable. And look how cool these are. They like bend up real easily. So like those would fit in a suitcase so easy. Yeah, good deal, definitely. I've got some hiking poles right here. Now, personally, I've never used hiking poles, but they are very popular. And, and this is a special ed teacher in me. If you are unstable on your feet at all, get some. We don't want you tipping over and hurting yourself on your trip. You wanna be safe. So that's like the number one priority. But we talked to the salesman a little bit about what he'd recommend since I don't personally use them. And of course he recommended the, the expensive black diamond ones, which I'm sure are very nice. Um, but these were like 169. These ones are about $25. So, you know, pick which one would be helpful to you, but for a very affordable price, you can have some hiking poles. They, they collapse down well, they're light. So they're not gonna take up a lot of space and, and they're not gonna be heavy, but you know, think about your safety if you are unsteady on your feet and people really do like hiking with these. Hey, it's our first bison sighting right here. Okay, you're gonna wanna be prepared with snacks. You cannot go wrong with beef jerky. It travels well, it doesn't take up much space, keeps your sugar level, you know, even, which is great. Um, what you don't wanna do is bring something like this, which has, which is bulky. A lot of the national parks, have limited garbage cans and you do not want to be whoa, carrying something like this around. My next tip is maps. I love maps. You've noticed in some of my videos on here that I use maps to show you where to go and I show you places about the parks. In particular, Yellowstone, you're off the grid when you're in the park, so a map is nice. Now they're gonna give you a basic map of the park when you go in through the entryway, through the gate. Um, and I've never used anything more than that. But if you're a map person like I am, um, you might you might want to order these and kind of study them before you go and have them on hand in your car while you're driving around. I, I really do refer to the map quite a bit when I'm in Yellowstone. Matt thinks I'm being a bit of a crazy woman, but I do recommend if you are going to swim in Firehole Canyon at Yellowstone, that you have a life jacket. Um, I know as a child, I got sucked under the water there and I've known friends that have had that happen. It's a swift river with undertoes. And so bring, I, you know, I don't care what kind you bring, but just bring a life jacket. Um, you know, Boiling River, I'm not that concerned. It's real shallow and it's just a good idea to have a life jacket if you're going in that um, Firehole Canyon. Okay, that rounds out Cheryl's portion of the list, which is all about survival and comfort. Cabela's is closed and they've kicked us out. so. Uh, you know, we have actually more things to put on this list, but we're going to include them in a link in the description here to our website. We'll have a list of, of all these things that we're talking about with links and stuff, so you can check that out. Now we're going to move on to the fun part of the list, my, my section. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that, I want to give a shout out to one of our subscribers, another one, another shout out here, to Shirley Duncan. We appreciate your comments on there. It's been really great that... Uh, it sounds like you, you've been watching most of our videos and you've had wonderful things to say. And um, so thank you, Shirley. Okay, we're gonna cover the second half of our, uh, our packing list now. And I'm sorry, our videos seem to be long. Like we're both teachers and so we can't seem to cut our, <laughs> our time down. I am used to teaching a three hour class at night, a history class at the university. And so somehow I got used to just babbling on. And so we're sorry if we, we go long on these videos. But we are trying to give you as much good information as, as we can to help you prepare for your trip. So I am going to cover some of the more uh, technical or technological, what would you say, um, techy things, I guess, for the trip. 
and some things that are a little bit more kind of concerning fun. Okay, so one of the things that we always hear about is uh, animal, where to find the animals and how to see animals in Yellowstone. This is a major uh, interest of people. And so um, we, I've already done another video on where to find them, but I want to share a couple of things with you on how to get a better look at them. And it may be worth it to you if you're going to Yellowstone to spend a little bit of money to get a better look at the animals because a lot of times you're going to see, like, if you see bears or wolves, they might be across the valley in Lamar Valley or Hayden Valley. Uh, bison you'll be able to see up close, but some of the other animals might be kind of far away. So this is Vortex Diamondback Binoculars. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a binocular expert, but these... I used the last time I went to Yellowstone and they were fantastic. In fact, um, I just used them a minute ago to take a look up at that peak right there. And they got in about that close on the zoom, about, about that close on the zoom on that peak. So uh, really good binoculars. I thought they were fantastic. I've recommended these in another video and uh, would highly recommend these. Um, now this is a scope that my father-in-law has and we've used this before at Yellowstone as well to, to scope a grizzly bear across the valley at Lamar, Leopold, and it comes with a tripod which is always a good idea if you're using a scope like that because it gets a little shaky when it's zooming in that close. This zoom got just a tad closer to that mountain peak in the background than the last um, binoculars that I just showed you. This one comes with a, a very nice case. I mean, this is a high quality product. So um, you might want to consider something like that if you want to get a better look at animals, if this is a real big deal to you. Now, <clears throat> a couple years ago, I traveled around and I saw about 20 national parks in one summer. I saw 20 national park sites in one summer, some amazing places around the West. I was traveling for work and um, I drove about 6,000 miles between Montana, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and saw just some incredible places. And totally regretted that I didn't have a decent camera to take pictures of some of these things. I was taking it with my phone. Now, since then, the phones have come a long way, and I've taken some really nice photos at Yellowstone just with my iPhone. So you can do that. But if you want to zoom in at all and take closer pictures of wildlife, you're going to need something a little better. So after my year of 20 national parks, I had a regret that I didn't have a good phone, a good camera. So I went out and I bought this Canon Rebel SL1. Um, now this is a tad, this particular camera is a tad outdated, but I have done some research on what the new, what, what the good new ones are. And, um, you know, I think if you're not into photography, if you're just looking at buying your first camera, the Nikon kind of, uh, universally online the Nikon D 3500 is is the best model and again I'll put a link to that in our website here it's about five hundred dollars and if you're gonna do it you want to get the zoom lens with it which is about another hundred because that's um, this this one here it, it does zoom but it doesn't get real close the default lens is about 55 millimeter on that um, and you can get a, a, a better lens that's gonna zoom closer and so that's definitely what I would recommend if you're going to go with a camera like that. Um, they make these cameras that are like $2,000. So if you're really wanting to get into photography, that, that might be fine. But I think most of the people that I'm probably talking to on this channel are pretty amateur photographers. By the way, if you are an amateur photographer, um, you want to take pictures with your phone in this direction instead of this direction when you're on your, your trip. Okay, These just tend to print better and look better to the eye. Now, if you don't want to spend five or six hundred dollars on on a camera like that, but you want a little bit nicer pictures than with just your phone, um, here's what I would recommend. I purchased this little zoom lens. It's only thirty dollars, and you attach it to your phone like this to your camera, and take and, and then you focus it, and then you take your picture that way. Now it doesn't like, whoops, it doesn't, um, it's not adjustable, it doesn't kind of zoom in and out, it's just fixed at a, at a zoom lens. But I was amazed, I used it to take pictures of that peak there, I'll put them on here, and uh, it, it didn't do too bad actually, I was amazed 
you could certainly do worse than than buying this little this little gadget for 30 bucks um, and it comes with a little tripod here which you probably would want to use because again when you're zooming in it's a little shaky and so um, it's really not a bad gadget for 30, 30 bucks I was amazed if you're wanting to take video again your phone is going to typically do a very good job of that except if you need to zoom if you're trying to get wildlife it's just so far away on your phone it's practically pointless um, uh, you would want an actual camcorder okay one that has a zoom this has a 32 zoom um, they make a huge difference so um, consider that if you're if you're you know wanting to take a video and if you do by the way post your video on YouTube and share it in a link with us because we'd love to see people's vacations and what really lights you up about Yellowstone. Something else that you might want to consider is a little travel book. I'm not going to go into great detail on this, but this moon book was very, very good. It was written by a, a woman who is a transplant to the West and uh, she's a very good writer. And one of the things I like about it is that it has stories in there behind the uh, just stories about the parks. Um, and to me, that's what really gets me going about the national parks. And the thing that I really want to share with you the most is some of the stories behind the parks. There's great, great stories. And I want to share stories about the American West and about um, its history and just some of the cool stuff that's, uh, that, that you might have never heard before. So um, this is a good one. Now, we are working on our own itinerary and our own audio guide. And so hopefully we'll have that out in 2021. Um, something that you could listen to while you drive around again so that I can share some of these, these really cool stories. Um, I, I mentioned I teach American history class at the university. And so I guess I'm just kind of dying to share some of these things. Okay, a couple, two more things I think. Um, some people will say bring a, like a phone charger here that is a portable charger. I don't really think you need that at Yellowstone because you'll spend a fair amount of time just in your car driving around. So I would just make sure you at least have a little uh, outlet, you know, charger thing that you can plug into your car outlet thing and uh, and connect it to your cable and keep it charged that way. By the way, there's really no phone cell phone connection in the park. Um, you can't get the internet on your phone while you're driving around in the park. So. Uh, it's not like you're going to be just using your phone a ton for navigation or something like that either. Um, so I don't think it's a huge issue on charging your phone as long as you have that. And then um, the last thing, I don't have it here actually. <laughs> the last thing is if you're going to Grand Teton as well, you might want to consider inflatable kayak or paddleboard. Um, Maybe not at Yellowstone so much, unless you're going to be camping or staying around Lewis Lake. Um, <clears throat> but down at Grand Teton, uh, and a lot of people team up their trip with Grand Teton, uh, String Lake, there is, uh, you can, there's a place, I mean, you can kayak and paddleboard at String Lake. It's really popular there. And we've done this before with the big, huge uh, kayaks and paddleboards, big plastic ones that you have to have a truck to carry around pretty much. Um, but we had never done that with the inflatable ones and we saw somebody there with the inflatable one and so we checked it out took a moment to check it out and it wasn't squishy or bouncy at all it was really nice it was a very good um paddleboard that was portable nice and portable you could just um take a little pump with you to pump it up so if you're going there i would recommend that you can rent them at dornan's but uh but again you're gonna have to have something big enough to drive them around in so you might want to consider that um and that's really all that I have. I'm going to put links to this on our website here in the description. And, you know, you need to know that we do get a small commission if you purchase from one of our links. Um, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. And honestly, uh, this really just kind of helps keep us going. I, we really would appreciate it that if you, if we give you any good ideas on this and you're going to buy one of these items for your trip, we kindly request you to buy it through one of our links just to give us um, just to give us a little bit of help here. We're both working full time. We have four kids. It's kind of crazy. So uh, we're just kind of sh trying to share our, our love of these places with you. Um, we certainly wouldn't recommend anything that we don't use or that we wouldn't, you know, want to buy ourselves. So um, anyway, that's, that's all we appreciate 
the suggestions for this video and if you have any other tips of what to pack for Yellowstone, please put it in the remarks. And if you have any other requests for videos, please put that as well. Thanks.